Welcome back. Hi. Jordan, <laughs> so excited to have you today on the pod. Um, we have we have spoken before. You were one of our first ever scholarship, founder scholarship winners, um, and it's so great to catch up with you. It's so great to catch up with you. Um, I was actually looking at a picture two nights ago about mm-hmm. the reception that we did mm-hmm. for your class that won, and that was that was a long, that was a while ago now. Yeah, <laughs> that was a while ago now, and now. I just catching up with you earlier. Like you've done so much. I I, I can't wait for our listeners to hear about your journey, about your story. Welcome to Stories from the River, a show in which we go behind the scenes at Broad River Retail. And so let's start with like, who's Jordan Harris? Like where are you from? Where's home? Mm -hmm. And what what got you here? Um, I am Jordan Harris. I am 25. I grew up in Charlotte. I still live in Charlotte. Um, And yeah, I went to A&T and I graduated from North Carolina Central uh, with my master's last year in speech therapy. Um, And my mom actually got me here. (laughs) She helped me to apply for the scholarship and um, I applied, wrote a paper and I won. <laughs> you sure, you sure did. You sure did. I that essay. I was privileged to have read that essay, and it was Thank it was you. wonderful. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's dig into this. So you went to West Charlotte. Yes. Go Lions. Yes. Uh, you pretty you pretty active while you were there. Uh, you, I think you were uh, on the cheer team. Mm-hmm. I cheered all four years. Okay. West Charlotte. Yeah. And is that like when you're cheering? Because this is different up in the Northeast. Like we had specific cheer teams for different sports. Um, usually we try out um, in like. July, August for football, okay. and then we'll go all the way the entire football season, and then we'll try it again for basketball, um, and do the entire basketball season and do it over each year. Does does, uh, does the soccer team not get a, any cheer? No, no. we no. didn't get that. I, I, say, <laughs> I was I was wondering if they like yeah, up in the Northeast, like the soccer team, we we didn't get any cheerleaders. No, no. okay, all right. I'm just making sure there's some <laughs> consistency. So you did that for all four years, and then um, you applied. You went to well, what made you pick A and T? Um. It was close to home, Uh and back then I really wasn't wanting to go too far from home yet. Um, And then I just went up there for a tour with my friends, and it just felt like a home, Mm. a second home. It was a lot. It was very family oriented, Um, and I just loved like the the atmosphere around the school and like the different organizations they had and stuff. And um, I already had a cousin and a few friends that um were already at auntie so it just kind of made it easier to pick that school that's great yeah. that's great you know that's pretty common like for, common for what we've heard from mm-hmm. several of the scholarship recipients is that it just felt right it felt yeah. like home it felt like a family and mm-hmm. uh and it's great it's important when you're when you're making that big decision yeah. and so well congrats on you. on your four-year degree uh, and speech, speech pathology. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's I, I was always going <laughs> to mess that. I was always going to mess that one up. Uh, so con- congratulations on that. Okay. Uh, but you didn't stop there. You, you, <laughs> and I think this is kind of like um, I wouldn't say controversial, but isn't mm-hmm. Central the the rival of A and T? Yeah, very big rivals. <laughs> and I chose to go to that school. So well now, so you got like your own house divided. Yeah, I'm. I hear it all the time. You went this. You went to Central after you went to A and T. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so if so, homecoming or, or if they're playing, mm-hmm. which they play every year, mm-hmm. who are you rooting for? Of course, A and T. Let's go, okay, go <laughs> Aggies. All right. So she, Jordan is still rooting for the Aggies, but so you just completed your master's in 2022. Yes. Amazing! Congratulations. Thank you. And so, what are you doing? What are you, What are you up to these days? I am a guest teacher for CMS Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. Love that. Love yeah. that. And so, elementary. Mm-hmm. And elementary. You, and you're brave. You're what? What, what grade? Because I've got. I've got a fourth grader, or actually now a rising fifth grader. Mm. So what? What? So I know which grade did you pick? Um, I'm mostly liking third grade. Okay. I've done all the grades, and that's just kind of where I found my sweet spot. Yeah. He third was, grade. He was pretty sweet in third grade. It, yeah. Something happened over that summer in fourth grade. Oof. Yeah, they turned uh, they, they, a leaf. <laughs> it's uh, it's different. Uh, well, congrats. Uh, um, and thanks for just you know for for being there for no for students like what a impressionable age elementary school mm-hmm. you, you, you must have a lot of patience yeah <laughs> so yeah uh i still remember my third grade teacher shout out to miss creedon mm. from, from a do temple elementary yeah she's uh she was great she was a great third grade teacher <laughs> um okay so let's think back to you know the scholarship and mm-hmm. and kind of i know you mentioned um your mom 
Miss Anita Harris uh, has led, has been a leader for us in the customer experience space for uh, for over ten years now. Mm -hmm. uh, she is uh, one of the you know pillars of of uh, of our customer experience team mm -hmm. and has been. So um, so part of this program, this founder scholarship fund, it's not just for current memory makers, it's for the sons or daughters of memory makers. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, cause you all are part of the family too. Yeah. Like uh, that's what this, I mean, it takes a village, you all are part of this family. Mm -hmm. And so when you apply, like what, what got you interested in applying for it? Um, well, I've always said, I kind of wanted to apply for scholarships my senior year. That was just like a thing that I wanted to do. Um, and then this scholarship came about. My mom was like, we're having a scholarship from our job. You should apply. You never know if you're going to win or not. Um, and then I applied and I wrote an essay. And That's a great essay. It was yeah. a great essay. Thank you. Um, and so I always love hearing the reaction piece. So tell me, like, do you still remember like when you got the phone call or when you were made aware? What, what, did that, what was that like? Yeah, I think I got an email or I might have got a phone call and I missed it because oh. I'm usually not great with my phone. Um, but I got an email. And um, I read it and I was actually, my initial reaction was like shocked. <laughs> I was like, did I really win? And then after that kind of setting, I was like happy and grateful. That's so cool. That I was able to get the scholarship and that it was able to fund my whole senior year in college. How cool is that? It's so cool. <laughs> Good for you. I love that. So um, as other memory makers or other like sons and daughters of memory makers consider applying for this mm -hmm. next year, what, what advice would you give them? Um, my first thing would be just to apply. Mm. Like you never know if you're going to win. Um, just try. Um, and then my second one would be to write about something that you're passionate about. I think that's what kind of made my essay, um, do well, I guess, is that I was writing about something that I was very passionate about mm. helping others, um, being there and then talking about the field that I was in. I'm very passionate. I love what I do. I love helping other people. And um, so it's kind of easy to write about. Yeah. So picking a topic that you know a lot about and that you feel heavily and strongly about. Yeah. I think that's great advice. Like, I mean, it just makes it easier, mm -hmm. right? You, you, I mean, when you're writing that, I remember those essays when we used to get like, yeah. I think we used to call them book reports. And you, yeah. have to, you have to like read this book or an essay on something that you just, you're like, oh. I'm just typing. Exactly. I'm just, I'm just typing. Exactly. I'm just, I'm literally just typing. Well, now you could like chat GBT it, I think, or mm -hmm. they, they, there's someone like, yeah does it but when you love it that the like it just feels differently mm -hmm. right that's so cool that's so cool um and for the person reading it it also feels differently so yeah. so thank you <laughs> no about problem. picking a topic <laughs> and i think that's great advice uh for future um scholarship recipients and future scholarship um folks that want to apply is mm -hmm. just pick something they love yeah great advice great advice all right so community uh, mm -hmm. I know you love to give back. Uh, you, we were talking about that earlier. And so tell me, like, wh what do you love to do when you're not in the classroom, when you're not, you know, studying? You know, how, how, do you, how do you like to get involved in the community? Um, usually I like to, um, like, I'll find, like, community service things where they may be giving out food. Um, or me and my mom just did one recently where we bagged um, uh, dried, dried items or, like, food for other countries, and mm. they'll send them over. Um, so things like that, just being able to feed others who, you know, don't have the opportunity to get food on a daily basis. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. And it's great that you could do that with your mom. Mm -hmm. Like we, I love us. That's a great, that's yeah. a great project to do. Get to help others and laugh a little bit. That's it's right. Just silly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing is good. It's yeah. good for the soul. Um, well, think about whether you're at A&T or West Charlotte, you know, we like to say it takes a village to kind of get through those chapters of our life mm -hmm. and, you know, all the highs and, you know, the, the days that are a little, a little harder than, than others. Yeah. Um, but mentors, someone that maybe stood out that kind of just was there for you to be a really good sounding board, gave you some good advice. Mm -hmm. who, who, who would that be? Um, I would say my parents, one, and then also my grandma. She's like, the little walking diary, I call it, because I just call her and tell her anything, and we'll sit on the phone for hours. Um, oh, but awesome. kind of towards my field, my neighbor, her mm. name is um, Kim Dickerson, and she's a speech uh, language pathologist as well. Okay. So just kind of being able to bounce ideas off of her and kind of get what she thinks, and um, yeah, she helped me a lot during school. Just being able to call her because she's already in the field, established, so I'm able to get like advice and how to treat this kid or what she think um, tool will work best for this kid yeah. and just things like that. How, how did you, how did you pick speech pathology? Um, well, for a long time, I kind of knew that I wanted to help people. So I wanted to be in that career field. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go into something medical, like being a doctor or anything mm -hmm. 
but I've seen how many years you have to be in school. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so I backtrack <laughs> and um, I just kind of started researching other things. And then I came across speech and um, it had everything I wanted, helping others, being able to work with kids. Um, I didn't have to do as much school mm -hmm. and I could be hands on and uh, like change people's lives. Mm. Seeing like the smiles that they get um, when they hit a new sound or made their target sound or um or just able to communicate without feeling frustrated it gave me like the most joy so that's so cool yeah uh, and i'm sure for for those that you're helping like what, what confidence and joy you can give them when, mm -hmm. when you're helping them with that uh, yeah that's wonderful that's wonderful well you graduated uh during a really <laughs> crazy time <laughs> a really mm -hmm. crazy time during during the covid pandemic and so <laughs> what was that like for you um Unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually graduated in 2020, but I didn't get to walk across the stage mm. until 2021. And even then, I only was allowed to invite two people. <sighs> so I didn't get the whole big family experience at graduation. Um, but it was still a great time um, just to be able to graduate and walk across stage was a big thing. But just switching everything to online was my biggest trouble. Yeah. Um, I'm so used to like being in person and being like hands on with um, objects or tools that we used in class and being able to like test things out on my peers and stuff like that. Um, it was hard. Yeah. So that well, was, yeah. Especially with your major. Like yeah. it's a pretty hands on major. Like mm -hmm. it's hard to kind of e-learn that. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard. <laughs> but you, uh, you didn't just survive it. You throw, you thrived through it, uh, which, you know, is, is evident why you just continue now with your education. Mm -hmm. When you, when you look back at that time, like, what did you, what did you learn about yourself? Um, that I'm stronger than what I think I, than, than what I thought I was. Love it. I, um, was like, I, I, for many a times I probably said that I can't do this, so I just want to stop. But, um, just continue to think about the reward at the end and how it would feel kind of kept me going. And then my parents just kind of motivated me to like, keep going to, you know, figure itself out and to get better and just got better. That's feel right. Very That's right. joyful. It's amazing. Uh, the power that, that, you know, sometimes like, well, just, if you just keep going, mm -hmm. just keep going. Um, and it compounds like yeah. you, you, you're building muscle memory mm -hmm. and you're getting stronger every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I love that. I love that you, that you found that, by yourself and, yeah. and, and it's just the beginning so mm -hmm. right you're doing a podcast today <laughs> right it's the first time for this so yes this won't be your last yeah that's what you're a pro you are Thank a pro you. all right favorite class at a and t what was what kind of stood out uh mm -hmm. what was your favorite class and why hmm. i don't know if i had a specific favorite class but i know i enjoyed any class that dealt with children because mm. it was kind of like my interest it's like what i wanted to learn only about um so yeah, anything with children. So like um, autism in children mm. or um, language disorders only pre like prevalent in children or anything, anything children was my favorite. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, was there a, a specific professor that kind of made that come to life? Hmm. I would probably say her name is Dr. Crossan. Okay. And she just kept the class, she kept the class fine. Mm. And um, she enjoyed working with children as well. So just hearing her perspective and hearing, even hearing her, um, how she works in the field with children, just like, yeah, that's okay, so I want to be. Dr. Crossan? Mm-hmm, Dr. Right. Crossan. Crossan, all right. Shout out to Dr. Crossan. <laughs> all right, wonderful. So podcasts, do, do, you, do you listen to podcasts? Uh, uh, if, if so, do you have some favorites or, or no podcasts and do more like streaming of other, other verticals of getting media? Um, I'm actually big on sports. Come on. So I like the pivot. It's three um, gentlemen who used to play sports. Okay. I watched that. And um, there's two women that I also watched. They have um, a pod podcast called Know For Sure. Know For Sure. Mm -hmm. Know For Sure podcast. And they just talk about life and just moving forward. And Very things cool. Like that. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So summer. Summer's mm -hmm. here. And I was just telling so I have two, two young boys. Mm -hmm. One's going into seventh. That's crazy. Seventh. And one's going into fifth. Mm -hmm. And as their last days of school approached, I just got, I got, I had like a flashback and I was like, I was like, boys, like, I remember my last day of school mm -hmm. and I remember like walking out knowing that tomorrow I didn't have to come back. Like, it, it was just like, oh my goodness, the summer, it feels so good. <laughs> so well, like, first of all, like now that you're like a teacher, like what is it? So is it the same, is it the same feeling for like a teacher? Mm -hmm. Like when, <laughs> when you walk out and you're like, <sighs> yeah. It's like a break, like, whew, 
okay, Monday I don't have to come back and wake up early and do it all over again. Do it all over again. Yeah. So what are you going to do this summer? What are some of your plans? What are some of your goals for the summer? I want to travel. I actually have a trip already planned to go to Vegas come for on. a friend's birthday. Okay. Um, and then probably just working with some summer programs, working with children again. Yep. Yeah, but probably take a little break first. You should. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And you got some travel plans. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. It's going to be hot out there in Vegas this summer. So, yeah. you know. Um, okay. So now we move to kind of dreaming. Mm -hmm. Let's dream about Jordan the next five years. Uh, dream job, dream, um, dream type of role. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Hmm. Honestly, I have, currently I have like a lot of avenues and career paths that I could go down. So I don't know if I've thought all the way five years from now, um, but I just hope that from five years from now, I'm in the field that I love, mm. um, that I'm happy and I'm doing something um, that, I, that I enjoy to do every day. And I'm, hopefully I'm successful in it. I'm sure you will be. Yeah. Um, anytime you get to do something that you love, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like we get to see a really great version yeah. of ourselves, right? And mm -hmm. so it's just finding that, um, well, I, I'm, I'm confident that you are, you will find that. Thank you. So that's awesome. What, what advice, what advice? So let's say there's some listeners here, memory makers that are thinking about speech pathology mm -hmm. or just getting into that field. Like what advice would you give them? Um, I would first say, make sure that you're um, like a people person, because mm -hmm. this field is very filled with people, whether it's children or teenagers or adults or seniors, it's surrounded with people. So make sure that you're a people person and that you have a little patience because some things might not go right on the first <laughs> on the first try. So just have a little patience with them and also research, mm. research on the field. Make sure you really know what you're getting into and um, make sure that what you read is what you might like to do something that you might like to do. And then also um, be open mm. is the biggest thing because this field is steadily evolving. It's more techniques and new skills coming out that you need to learn. Um, and be open to wanting to try different avenues within the field, whether it's the hospital or schools or private pla practice or a clinic or just any type of field you can get in. Be open to trying out all of them to see what you really love. That's great advice. That's yeah. great advice. I'm going to pull on that thread just for a quick second because mm -hmm. um, you mentioned how things have advanced or techniques have, have um, you know, evolved. Mm -hmm. So it, can you give me an example of, uh, you know, so maybe some opportunities that how you solved them mm -hmm. five years ago how, how are they like how's tech and how, how's that changed today yeah so a lot of things that when I first started out it was kind of um we use like a lot of flip books and stuff like that or tests were in like books but now you can do the test on the computer mm. um you can <clears throat> screen a child on the computer to see if they um qualify for services oh wow um and a lot of um apps and stuff like that are on iPads now. So instead of having to bring a lot of books into the sessions, we're able to just bring an iPad and we can just go through different um, techniques and sounds just using an iPad. I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, not even you need a backpack anymore. Yeah, you don't need it. You just bring the, you just bring the iPad. Mm -hmm. you're, you're good to go. Yeah. Or now these new vision Apple glasses. Yeah. I think it's, you're going to, it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Okay. So I know you've done a lot of studying uh, because you, not only did you complete your undergrad, you completed your master's. So you are a studying pro. Yeah. And so let's get some let's get some t uh, best practices. Like how do how do you set up the game for when you have to study? Um. Well, actually, when I first started, I had to learn how to study. Okay. Because all us more. throughout high school, I never really was like a I never really studied, um, which is not a good thing. So don't do that. Um. But I had to learn while I was like around all my friends that have had to like study. I had to learn from them, like what techniques do they use? Um, so I found writing things down and like highlighting kind of helps because the more you write it, the more to input into your brain and mm. memory. Um, but my biggest thing was sleep. Oh, tell, oh, tell us more about that. <laughs> I am very big on before tests or before anything um, to get some sleep. I'm not one who like stays up to 3 a.m., or stays up really late or an hour before the test starts. I like to get a good night's sleep and then wake up. Um, Cause I feel like once I get to the test, if I'm sleepy, that's all I'm gonna think about. It's like, I wanna go back home, I wanna go to sleep. So if I just get a good night's sleep and the, the more you sleep, it kind of stays in your mind and it kind of replays in your mind. So when you wake up and you actually get to the test, you're like, well, I went over there last night. 
Jordan, feels good. I mean, you couldn't have set us up any better. Like <laughs> you, you do know we're in the furniture and sleep business. Yes. Like this is a retail company. And uh, yeah, great night's sleep. Mm-hmm. You can get a great night's sleep at, uh, you just go, go, uh, go get a sleep test, a rest mm-hmm. test at yep. your local Ashley location mm-hmm. and we will help you with that. That's, <laughs> that is really great advice. Um, and yeah, the repetition, really important too. Yes. Like to r- repetition, writing it down, let it sink in. Mm-hmm. But then like, Self care, like like Self, get yeah. get some rest, mm-hmm. get some rest. You'll be fresh. You'll be ready to go. I'm ready to go. I love that. That's <laughs> great. Great advice. Okay, so ooh, I love hearing about the favorite snack. So mm-hmm. like, so as you were writing it down and you know and, and doing your flashcards, writing it over and over again, so it can sink in before you you dozed off. What, what was that preferred studying snack? Um, I would like to call myself a big chip girl. I love chips. Yeah, yeah. Me and my mom usually say we're like chip connoisseurs. Oh, okay, um, okay. Anything chip, I love chips. Well, we're, we're gonna need to, <laughs> we're gonna need to, because like, we've had that answer before. So we we have to drill down. Like, mm. so being a connoisseur of, of chips, which by the way, likewise, mm-hmm. likewise, uh, top two. What were what, what the two of the mm. high in the rotation? Let's see. In college, it was Ruffles, Cheddar, and Sour Cream. Oh, so good. In, in my pantry right now. Yeah, they're yeah. in our pantry right now, <laughs> right too. Now. Definitely at the top. And then I like barbecue. Which kind? Mm. Hmm. I really like kettle cooked barbecue chips. Okay, okay. wow. Well, yeah. A little bit more crunchier. You'll see those at the barbecue. No, no <laughs> doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> You have so much going on. Like mm-hmm. I'm always like, just it's convicting. I'm like, gosh, I'm, I'm not even like, that. it's crazy how much you have going on. So how do you balance it all? It's how, how do you keep how do you keep everything moving? How do you keep the, all the plates spinning? Um, I like to write things down. I'm a big like in my phone. There's like a bunch of different notes. Okay, that I have everything like planned or like days when I have a lot going on. I like to type it out and write it down. Um, but also. Um, I try not to procrastinate. Mm. I try to meet things like way before the deadline. So that way I have that time to just relax rather than trying to cram in an assignment or anything. And then honestly, sometimes it's hard to keep balance. Yeah. Um, so you just try to try your best, do things as it comes, um, and try not to stress out about it. It'll all get done. That's, That's how right. I feel. Good. Living <laughs> in the moment. Yep. I love it. I love it. So if we're up in Greensboro and we're, we're you know, hanging out, visiting North Carolina A and T. What's uh, where, where's the best place to go eat? Where, where, where'd you enjoy uh, mm-hmm. getting your afternoon snacks, lunch? Where, 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 where'd you go? I say there was two places. Me and my friends went a lot. We went to um, Daryl's, Daryl's a lot. Okay, and we went to Stephanie's, which is kind of like soul food. So okay. we go there on like Sundays to feel like we're back home, get yeah. a home cooked meal. And then Daryl's was just like a nice like overall. They have everything. That's great. <laughs> Stephanie's and Daryl's getting shout outs. I love it. All right. Great. So we got some, we, we got to get some good food recommendations on the podcast. That's it's, it gets a lot of comments, a lot of feeds <laughs> on that. So, so kind of looking back now at your education and, it, it, you know, less, I mean, what, um, what's next? What's next for you? Hmm. Um, figuring out what career path I really want to go down, Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's teaching or whether it's going back into speech. I think I still want to um, get my license in speech therapy so that I have that as the, um, just a, you know, backup. Um, What if I choose uh, teaching, but if I don't choose teaching, go into speech. I know those are two um, career paths that I'll enjoy. I already do. So um, just furthering into that. I love it. Mm -hmm. Jordan, um, just some final thoughts. As I, as I sit here and we kind of kind of just finish up this chat, uh, first know that you have so many memory makers uh, that are going to continue to cheer you on as you continue yeah. to go and pursue whatever path. Because I know that you're going to attack it with a t- determination, mm-hmm. with the joy uh, that you've shown here on this pod today. Um, but you know what? What can we? You know, as we think about this founder scholarship fund and think about this next chapter for you. What final thoughts would you have for the program or for, for others, um, you know, considering this program, considering the scholarship? Um, well, first, I want to say thank you just for the opportunity um, for the scholarship. And even you guys just having the scholarship, given a chance for people not to have to worry so much about mm-hmm. finances during a college, because that's a big thing. Um, so I want to say thank you. And to everyone else, just apply. Write something that you're passionate about. Um, write it out, brainstorm. And um, just apply. You never know if you can win. You never know if you will win. If you do, you'll be up here. That's right. (laughs) 
Well, Jordan, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. I hope you have a really restful summer, thank that you, you enjoy your trips <laughs> that you have planned. You. Um, and then you're going to get right back into it by, mm -hmm. you know, going and, and caring and looking after and uh, and just impacting, right? The, yeah. the role of a teacher. My, my oldest sister, um, my eldest sister, she, she <laughs> listens to the pod. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, she's also a teacher. And I have such such respect and admiration for teachers because um, – that they are such like just impact mm -hmm. and change agents. Like they always, you talk about a, a career, a profession that leaves fingerprints yeah. on people. Um, teachers do, mm -hmm. of course they do. I mean, they, they, they help kind of um, sharpen that vision for us. Yeah. Right. And, and they, they help us kind of dream a little bit bigger mm -hmm. on what we can do. And they take us through these amazing chapters and stories of things that we never thought we even could dream of yeah. and so uh thanks thanks for all you do in our community no and problem. for you know being a, a, just a rock star and and then and just impacting the youth so jordan thank you so much no have problem. a great summer thank you and we'll look forward to catching up with you here uh, in a couple more years to kind of check in and see where you're at yes of course take care thanks for listening to stories from the river to check out more episodes visit storiesfromtheriver.com join us again next week and remember to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast.